Hey Deckers, SteamOS 3.5 has finally hit preview, taking one step closer to actual stable release. So if you want to change into the preview mode, all you need to do is head into the system settings and then under the beta participation, hit the drop down and switch to preview. This will reboot and install the update. You may have to do another update once you're in the channel, but this will be confirmed by looking at the OS version and seeing 3.5 down here. But before we get into all the new funky features, just a reminder that there is still up to 20% off Steam Decks up until the 21st of September, with 10% off the 64 gig, 15% off 256 gig, and the 20% off the 512, as well as 20% off the official docking station. So let's dive into some of these updates. Some of you may have noticed that the color icon that you may have seen in some of our videos has disappeared from the quick settings under the brightness. They seem to have moved these color settings now under the display section under this adjust display colors menu item, which isn't as obvious. You get a nice little tester screen to change the color vibrance, which is basically what we were doing previously between native sRGB and boosted, as well as the color temperature as well, which really messes with your eyes if you're not used to that. So I'd leave that one at default. If you run this menu, from within a game, it actually keeps the game open in the background and you can see those settings in real time. You can see with Mortal Kombat 1 here, actually the boosted really does make quite a difference. Although I go kind of in the middle between sRGB and boosted, considering native was what was on previously, just looks really washed out in comparison now. So I do like that new boosted mode. You'll also notice that there is a new HDR option. And this is how I noticed that the dock that I'm testing doesn't support HDR, so I won't be reviewing that one. But if you do want to use HDR, you can use the new heat map tool and also set the SDR content brightness when you're on HDR for non HDR content, as well as looking at native color temperature control. So quite a lot of nice HDR options there for people who are wanting to take advantage of HDR displays. What you'll notice though that is missing from that menu weirdly but it is still under the performance menu in the quick settings is the variable refresh rate option. I tried loads of docks and cables and my monitor is definitely VRR capable because it has FreeSync. However, I was not able to get this to activate. So if you managed to get that to work, let us know what you did. One of the very late additions that they didn't really announce apart from in the other beta channel, but it is in this preview is under the storage section you now can see the shaders and how much space that shaders are taking up on your Steam Deck. I'm not sure if DLC did show before, but it definitely does look a bit nicer with all the extra colors and options here. It didn't seem to have any shader cache on my SD card, which I thought was a bit odd. It definitely seems to put all that on the local. And if you did run the beta previously, it has also fixed the double SD card issue. And we'll get on to a few of the other little tweaks and fixes in a little while as well. One of the other options is they've adjusted the scaling mode. So you can now have a stretch as well as the fill or the zoom mode. So they have tweaked those scaling modes. If you do have screens with a different aspect ratio, so you do have a fair amount of options here. They've also added loads of extra controls around the thermal and manual GPU clock limits. So you do want to have a play around with those, you can, but I steer well clear of those to be honest. I just run the defaults. And you may notice that the new level two performance overlay is in the preview. So if you are wanting to see that, which we've been running in the beta for quite some time now, then you now can get that in the preview track. Now they're the kind of most noticeable changes, but there are quite a lot of other changes, including an issue where certain workloads would exhibit severe CPU performance unless the SMT was manually disabled. So that's now been disabled by default and external storage devices will now also be mounted. So if you were running the auto mount script previously, that's no longer required and you may want to stop it running. I've not seen any issues with them both running, but it's just not needed anymore. So worth removing. Of course, they've got the updated graphics drivers. So you get huge improvements in the performance in certain games, especially where they have view model corruption, like in Amnesia the Bunker. And they've also fixed issues with Immortals Avium and Keijua Gogo. Improved Bluetooth connection stability, especially with multiple controllers. And they say they've slightly improved resume speed. Not that I've really noticed. Some other headline-ish changes. That they've worked around a problem where allowed tearing could cause heavy stuttering in the performance overlay or other overlays were active. 
Tearing is now possible in all situations and they fixed the problem where the keyboard input would not be detected in Overwatch 2 and changed some controller firmware to fix an issue where some thumbstick touch sensors would lose touch periodically. They have also done some voltage offset changes, improving the robustness of the firmware settings reset cord against some boot hang scenarios and fixed a rare issue which we have seen a few people report on Twitter, which would set the processor TDP limit too low, causing CPU and GPU frequencies to be stuck at 400 and 200 megahertz respectively. Issue that I've never seen, so I'd be interested if you've seen this one about fixing an issue where the charging light would turn back on when plugged in, even though it was fully charged. Of course, there are loads of other little fixes. One very big fix that we don't really touch upon is that they have updated the Arch Linux base. This brings a ton of KDE desktop mode changes, but I'll link to the KDE website so you can have a good look at the desktop mode fixes down below so you can actually dive in and see a lot more of the changes for the desktop mode if you are interested in the desktop mode on Steam Deck. Let us know in the comments below if you're still excited for Steam OS 3.5 as it definitely seems to be nearing the stable branch and we couldn't go back since we had it in the beta. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.